Hey guys, so it's me and Khaled Mashile and today I want to tell you guys a story about my first experience of investing in the stock market. So my first time investing in the stock market, by the way, I'm starting a new series, it's going to be called My First Time and I'm going to be speaking to a variety of people about their first time making financial decisions. But let me tell you about my first time investing in the stock market and what I went through with a certain company. Anyway, remember that my videos do not constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA to give you financial advice. So I have my laptop open today because there are numbers that I need to be reading out to you guys as I take you through this very painful experience of my life. So anyway, I don't know if you've ever gone to university or you've gone to a FET college or you've gone to a, a whatever else that is a, T, a Technicon that is whatever is left out there. But it happens in human nature, right? So when you first arrived, I first arrived at Rhodes University back in 2006. Man, okay, we were the we were the shits, okay? We were the darlings of the school because we were new, we were fresh, and everybody felt the need to tell us who not to speak to. There was a person at Rose used to be called the Casanova, and we were told to stay away from the Casanova. And there was like a group of boys who told them to stay away from those kind of guys. But basically, in first year, you were like fresh. I mean, in first year, you didn't even need to be good looking, okay? All you needed to be was first year, fresh. You just had to be a geo whatever year it was in. So in 2006, I was a geo six. Fresh, everybody was hitting up on us, you know. There were guys who were just like, mm -mm, I don't feel like talking to you. And then the inevitable happened. First year came, first year passed. And then you know what happened? Second year came. And what happens in second year is that it's the new year. So therefore, Geo7s are arriving. And all of a sudden, they now are the darlings of the, comp of the, of the school, you know, of the university. And it was such a very humbling and a very non-flattering experience. Luckily, I was in a relationship, so I don't care, whatever. Yeah, it wasn't, it, it was one of those things. But still, you still want to be hit on, right? So basically, that's what kind of happened with my experience with um, <laughs> a company called Breit. It is actually an investment trust, right? Um, it's a listed investment trust. And um, Breit... Back in 2016, going into 2017, was the darling of the market. And I give you a bit of a background of why it became the darling of the market. I mean, in 2016, its share price skyrocketed from 19 Rand 95 to 166 Rand 94. Now, you can imagine, yes, the investment world says to you, buy, uh, buy low, sell high, right? But the reality is that you don't know when to catch this train as it moves so as you're watching it just skyrocket everybody's thinking oh my goodness oh my goodness i need to get in i need to get in because the train is going to pass me right same way a lot of people got passed by the naspers train right because they were waiting for the perfect time to come in and let me tell you i was just coming in into the market early 2017 i had registered on the standard bank securities and i had absolutely no idea what i was doing and this lady who was doing some sort of PR for, for, for these kind of companies, said to me, you know what, here are the numbers. I mean, she didn't coerce me into investing. She just said, here are the numbers. Look at the numbers. And the numbers were incredible. From 19 Rand 95 to 166 Rand 94, guys, there was just no way that this thing was going to tank. And it wasn't only, I didn't invest in it because of the price on the market or how the share price was growing. I would invested also looking at the history, a little bit of the history. So just to give you a bit of background on, on Braid. Braid um, acquired um, a stake in Pepco back in 2011, right? And then in 2015, I think, if I'm correct, yes. So they, they bought like a 4 billion rand stake in Pepco in 2011. And in 2015, they sold that stake to um, Steinhof at, a, at like triple the amount. So obviously, it literally, I mean, that was 2015, their share price skyrocketed. Because everybody was just like, this type of an acquisition, if this is the type of investments that this company is going to be acquiring and going into, this is the company that you want to buy shares, right? And I mean, they were selling some of their, share, um, their shares at 50% more than their net asset value. Literally, that's what they were selling it at. So, and, and, and generally, these kind of companies will sell quite low to their NAV because it's, it's it, their investment trusts, right? Um, so... We all were just like, listen, Braid is going to do some absolutely amazing stuff, right? And you also then, because remember when we talk about investment, we always say, look at the trust factors 
of a company. So this company had all the bells and whistles, right? Like all of us in first year, it had all the bells and whistles. It was, it had done a, an absolutely amazing uh, acquisition. It had sold very well. It was looking to invest in amazing, um, amazing uh, propositions. But also, their shareholders voted that they were not going to take any dividends out in that year when they did absolutely amazing with that Pepco deal. So you're just sitting there thinking this company obviously has a, you know, the leadership has got a long term uh, uh, view of or vision of what the company wants to do. Well, apparently not. Because what Braid then went and did, um, they went and bought uh, a UK retailer, I think it was a UK fashion retailer called New Look. Yeah, I know we find New Look there at Small Street. Ne? That is the one they went to buy. They went to buy that one. A UK retailer called New Look. First and foremost, you could have reinvested that money in South Africa. I just don't understand what you did there. But you could have. You could have literally put that money into South Africa. And it would have been great. But no, new market. They didn't really have any research on the UK market. They didn't have really great research in terms of, of the uh, uh, fashion retailing. And um, that deal literally went droops. Jubes. And when I say jubes, I don't mean like a nani. They even had to write it off. They wrote off the entire sale of this thing and then they tried to dispose of their uh, uh, shares in the well, their holding in the company to a point where they ended up with 18%, which meant they had absolutely no voting power in terms of what actually happens to this retailer. Guys, it was really bad. And, you know, it went down so quickly. I mean, they spent almost 87% of that 31 billion, which is 27 billion rand on what, on what they made from Pepco, right? They spent 87% of it buying this. <sighs> I mean, I, yeah, it was bad. But basically what it looked like for me as a small scale investor, I had invested, I took, um, uh, uh, let me quickly go to my, um, Standard Bank. So this is the Standard Bank page and what it looks like, the securities page. So I look, I'm look, i looking into my um, portfolio and basically I spent, Braid, I spent, I bought 173 shares at 140 Rand 48. When I bought them, they were retailing at 140 Rand 48 or trading at 140 Rand 48. I spent 24,302, right? 24,302 on these Braid shares. 173 of them bought them at 140 rand 48, spent 24,302. Today, the braid shares are trading at 23 rand 95. And my portfolio, my braid portfolio is worth 4,143. So I have lost 20,409. That's how much I've lost on braid. Just braid alone. That's how much I've lost. I've lost 20,000 Rand in less than two years. This was 29, 2017. We're in 2019 now. I've lost 20,000 Rand on braid shares, right? So the lesson that I want you to derive from this is that, look, you know, uh, sometimes uh, you don't need to go back. You can just go home. There's no need for you to be going big. Um, sometimes you need to give your shareholders some sort of certainty um, instead of trying to go bigger than what you've already gone because deals like the Pepco deal don't come every day for these uh, um, investment trusts, right? So you need a solid, and I, and I always say this to people, if you do good in something, yes, the natural instinct is to try and do it again because you've gotten, mom you've gotten momentum, but don't be... Don't, don't fix something that is not broken. Um, these guys could have gone into another South African deal and they could have done absolutely well. They didn't need to go into a new market that they didn't know. But because we were all on this high as the investors and we were all like, look at what Bridge is doing, look at what Bridge is doing. They're going to do absolutely amazing you know, with this thing. We, 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 we were all very excited. But I do think that there were those seasoned investors that did raise concern in terms of what Braid, the movements that Braid was making. So another lesson that you could take from this is that sometimes we speak about, we, we speak about um, uh, in families, we don't talk about uh, wealth. We don't talk about how to generate wealth. The older guys don't want to give us information. Go out and speak to your financial or wealth manager and ask 
Uguti, what are the right moves that you should be making? What are some of the things that you should be looking into if you're going to be investing? So yeah, that is my great story. I'm hoping my first time investing in the stock market. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not delusioned by it. I am not discouraged by it. I'm still investing in the stock market. I'm still going in and I'm still going in hard.